One thing you need to realize is that you're working way too hard and it's what's keeping you poor. This chart shows that the wealthiest countries in the entire world also work the least. Holy crap, Myanmar, are you okay? And then there's Germany, straight up just chilling through life with one of the highest GDP per capita throughout Europe. Okay, okay, wait, what about all the inspirational quotes over Instagram and Pinterest? Hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. In an ideal Instagram world, these quotes fit perfectly in a caption. They get you motivated and excited to bust out your laptop and start working furiously to move up the wealth ladder. But what if I told you that this is all bullshit? In 2017, a massive study conducted by the Urban Institute revealed that only 16% of people who lived half their lives in poverty were able to move up the ladder by their late 20s. These numbers were based on individuals who were consistently working or attending school, so you know, hardworking people. But only a few of them were able to get out of the hardest level of escape room. My math professor told me one story that completely changed my life forever. If you go out in the desert in the middle of the scorching sun and you bring a shovel and you start randomly digging holes for 12 hours straight, have you worked hard? Absolutely, zero doubt about it. But are you any wealthier? People don't pay you for your hard work. They pay you to solve a problem. The more complex the problem is to solve, the fewer people who are capable of solving it. And thus those who can solve it can charge more money. Sounds obvious, right? But not many people, including myself, made that connection without actually hearing it out loud. 73% of Americans believe that on a scale of one to 10, when it comes to success, hard work is a 10. And this is one of the problems with measuring success in such a black and white terms. It creates this illusion where successful people are considered hard workers, but those who aren't are considered lazy. But this is the farthest thing from the truth. Is a single mother working three different jobs to support her children lazier than the CEO of a company making phone calls all day at his desk trying to figure out how to work Zoom? No, of course not. But it comes back to the desert story. Money comes from the specific value you bring to people. Sure, someone could be doing backbreaking labor for 12 hours straight, but is that a problem only very few people can solve? Probably not. An effective CEO can however close a deal worth millions of dollars with a five minute conversation on the phone. So where did this mentality come from that brainwashed me, a nerdy awkward teenage boy throughout high school? In the 1900s, after Henry Ford's revolutionary assembly line gained traction all across the US, we saw a huge boom in productivity. And with more productivity came a lot more money. So if you grew up during those times with those cool looking hats, seriously, check out those fancy hats. So if you grew up during those times, your input was directly tied to your output. You equated your wealth with the hours you put into the factory. There weren't a whole lot of jobs during that time, and in a factory, the more hours you put in, the more you were able to produce and the more money you made. But those days are pretty much long gone. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, manufacturing work has gone down tremendously from 32% in 1910 to 8% in 2013, while other types of services and industries have increased. Listen, the US economy has grown exponentially since then, and now there are thousands of different paths to make money, like YouTube, online stores, and only After working part-time jobs while attending high school, juggling several clubs, working throughout colleges, and building businesses throughout my entire life, here are three reasons hard work won't make you rich, and the second one will blow your mind. This is you, you're hard at work right now, typing away in the office. You go in early and work late to make sure your boss is happy. You go home and you sleep for four hours and then you go back to work to make your boss happy. You give up your free time to get more work done on the weekends to make your boss happy. And what do you get in return? Probably the same fixed salary as your coworker, Jacob. Although your boss may be grateful for all your effort, your boss is not giving you a raise every month. You'll typically need to wait till the end of the year for a pay bump that doesn't even keep up with inflation. But what if I told you that that half a percent raise at the end of the year might not even be worth it? There are a ton of downsides when you work for that hard for that long. The more you work, the more exhausted you become when you get back home, you have trouble sleeping, or you might not have enough time to live life outside of work. Keeping yourself busy all the time prevents you from thinking outside the box. If you're constantly stressed out, your mental clarity and creativity will suffer. And those two things, mental clarity and creativity, are the tools that you need to notice the problems that need solving in the world and thinking of ways to come up with solutions to those problems. But hey, at least you're producing more in the office, right? Getting more work done, you old chap. Research found that increasing the workload from 40 to 60 hours a week 
did not produce an output of 50% or more, which is what you'd imagine would happen since you're working 50% more of hours. Instead, the actual output from those extra hours was only between 25 to 30%. Giving it all your effort at work all the time will eventually burn you out, make you want to lay on the floor, reconsider life, and daydream. You think, I'll just take a one week vacation and come back and restart the entire hard work cycle all over again. But imagine, what could you achieve if, instead of working those extra hours at your job, you instead went home and just lived or spent some time to think about effective ways to solve problems, start a new business venture, or learn to improve yourself. Chances are any of these things would financially reward you much more than staying late at work to make your boss happy. Pop quiz, what is the most valuable resource in the entire world? Data, oil, magic lamps, gold, water, cheeseburgers, diamonds? Nope, it's time. And just about everyone you know is trading this very limited resource of theirs for money. And here's why you won't get rich doing this exchange. Let's say you're being paid X amount for Y number of hours that you work. Cool. Unless you're Dr. Strange, you're limited by the number of hours that you can work. 24 hours in a day, assuming you don't need to eat or sleep, which I don't really recommend because, you know, health. Second, there is a limit to how much someone will pay you for your skills. If you are a super successful doctor, sure, you might be able to make $3,000 per hour, but eventually you hit a ceiling because the market won't pay a higher price. Directly trading time for your money makes very, very few people wealthy, which is why 78% of American adults live paycheck to paycheck, despite being the most overworked developed nation in the world. But here is the million dollar secret. The rich, they don't trade their time for money. Instead, they trade value for money. Value is easily scalable and isn't limited by the number of hours that you have in a day. Think about this dude, Steve Jobs. He created the iPhone, which made the company billions of dollars. Or Bill Gates, who revolutionized the computer. Or even this video that you're watching right now on YouTube. Hopefully you find value in it. I'm able to create this video once, and if the YouTube algorithm gods love it, then hundreds of thousands of people, just like you, can watch it and everyone can simultaneously turn that like button into a beautiful black. Come on, go, go ahead and click it. That was a good call to action. Instead of thinking, what is a job that you can work hard at that people will pay for? Start thinking, what value can you provide that will solve a problem? It's a nuanced difference where instead of you directly trading your individual person, your time in exchange for money, you think of scalability. How can you easily create one thing that will provide more value to more people? Here's a harsh truth. You are replaceable at your job and you're paid based on how easily you can be replaced. And sadly, some people are much more easier to replace than others. The more specialized, skilled, and more value that you can bring your company, the more they'll pay you because they'll find it harder to replace you. That's why CEOs, surgeons, lawyers can get paid a lot of money. One million dollars. It takes them years, decades even, to successfully study, learn, and apply their skills. But even then, those professions and those people are still replaceable. But you want to know the one single thing that isn't replaceable. Your favorite Avengers superhero. Mine is Iron Man, so leave a comment down below who is your favorite Avengers superhero. The mantra of hard work and you'll get rich is really damaging psychologically. Here's why. You work hard, you don't get rewarded or recognized, so you think you need to work even harder. This cycle continues until you burn out, you give up, and then you blame yourself. After 26 long, grueling years on this earth, I learned four things to do instead of working hard to help me climb the wealth ladder. First, you need to have a clear view of what value you bring to the table and be real with it. Just saying that you work as a corporate concierge for a multinational food delivery conglomerate that transport key products from producers to consumers when you really work at DoorDash doesn't cut it. And hey, no hate to any delivery drivers. They're some of the hardest working people I know. But this ties back to the value factor and being honest with yourself is the first step. If your skills aren't up to par, take some classes or find a course online that will help you learn more valuable skills. The more you invest in your knowledge and your skills, the more you're able to leverage to ask for more compensation. Abraham Lincoln once said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. The key to greater results is to work smarter, not harder. Focus on high impact tasks. Chances are you have a super long running to-do list that you will never get to the end of. Instead of trying to accomplish every single thing and stress out if you can't, focus on the tasks that will have the greatest long-term impact. The things that are the most critical to your job performance and the company's success. Next, always look for ways to solve someone's problem. If you go out in the desert and you start digging holes, no one's gonna give you money for that. Well, unless there's like a desert dog who's paying people to dig holes for him so he can bury his bones. But what if instead you convince a startup company to pay you a boatload of cash to dig holes in a very specific area so they can plant some trees? 
Same situation, completely different outcome. And finally, as unfair as it sounds, you need to be a little lucky. It doesn't matter if you're a genius or extremely talented at something. In the end, success or getting rich requires a little bit of luck and chance. Being in the right place at the right time, coming up with great ideas and having the right support system as you try to execute. It's also about financial literacy and knowledge and life circumstances because two people with very similar incomes can end up in entirely different levels of financial security. The average human in the US lives to around 79 years old. If you started working from 18 until 65, a typical nine to five, five days a week, you would have worked around 80,000 hours. If you slept eight hours a day for each weekday, you would have slept 80,000 hours. That leaves 80,000 hours of free time during your work days. But what about the time it takes you to commute back and to from work? What about the time it takes to get ready or preparing a meal, packing your kids' lunches, picking them up from school, cooking, dinner, cleaning, running errands? A study conducted by H&R Block concluded that the average American had about four hours and 26 minutes of free time per working week. Each working week, meaning that the average American worker had less than one hour of free time from Monday to Friday. Look. I'm not trying to say that hard work isn't important at all. Of course it is. Unless you're super lucky, wealth won't simply fall onto your lap. But it's time to realize that the mantra of hard work is all it takes to be successful and wealthy is wrong and harmful. Just because you're staying late in the office every day doesn't mean you'll be rich and successful. You need to work smarter to maximize your effort, your skills, and your value as much as possible to be wealthy and successful. But You'll never be able to get there if you keep falling for these six money traps. Check out this video to learn about the traps and scams that you're falling for every single day that's stealing all your money from you.